you sit in a room and you see people around you. And I, I'll ask you, who has high cholesterol level? You look and you wouldn't be able to know. Who has hypertension? You'd look at the people and wouldn't be able to know. Who's older than 50 years old? You'll do pretty much good, good work. And so there is a biology of aging, and the biology of aging is obvious, more than anything else, more also than surviving cancer and other things. There is a biology of aging. What people don't realize is that this biology can be targeted, and that we made huge advances in the biology of aging, and we can target the biology of aging effectively. We've done all the clinical trials to do that. But our problem is that if there's no indication for a drug like that, then the healthcare providers are not going to pay for it. If the healthcare providers are not going to pay for that, pharmaceuticals are not going to jump in and make better drugs and combination drugs so we can really live healthier longer. And we have a plan to overcome that and it's called TAME. It's a trial where we take one of those drugs that we're sure is working, we have all the data that is working, and we're going to do a trial in order to get indication. And once we have indication, we're going to extend health, uh, health, health span significantly. And if you participate in that, your legacy is going to be as great as the discovery of immunization and antibiotics. Well, you know, we wrote a grant several, several years ago, some of the leaders uh, in the biology of aging. And we said that, you know, we're making progress in biology and the geriatric community is not really sitting in, our, in the same session, so they don't hear about that. And because we're close to translation, maybe we should bring them together. And we started, we got this grant, we started getting together, and I think the, the most interesting occasion that really changed, I think, a lot of things was in a meeting that I've organized in a very uh, far out parador in Spain, in the middle of nowhere. We called it a French jail, jail because there's nowhere to go, and French because the food was really good. But we got geriatricians and uh, biologists, and we start discussing over four days, how, how are we moving on? And that's the time that I conceived the idea of TAME, which is taming aging with metformin. Um, and this is the idea. The idea was we need not only to prove the concept that aging can be targeted, but we need to get an indication from the FDA. So the best thing for us to do is take an existing drug and repurpose it. And by, by that time, just a few months before, the most important paper or the final important paper appeared about metformin, that people with diabetes on metformin have lower mortality than people without diabetes. And we knew that metformin extends lifespan, extends health span. You give it to mice, you give it to nematodes, they all live longer. We, we, we knew that, but that was an opportunity for us to come and think of how do we do a study where we'll show that we target aging and that the FDA approves that. And uh, there is a whole process of how we got there, and unfortunately, in the last two years, we spent a lot of efforts that was unsuccessful in trying to have the NIH as a partner, the National Institutes of Health in the United States as a partner, and it didn't go. We are pretty much ready to launch the study, except that we don't have all the fundings. We have the fundings to start, but if you recruit a patient for a five-year study, you have to make sure that there's money to end it. So we need to get more money to support this study. Let me just put it in perspective. This is about a $50 million, less than that probably, over five or six years. If metformin will extend 
hell span, even mildly, even two years, that will be a seven trillion uh, uh, saving for the economy by 2050. So our investment is negligible <laughs> compared to the return. And we're looking for somebody who will, our several people, you know, think of billionaires who can give $1 million a year for over five years, uh, just to have a legacy and to know that without this study, we're actually stuck. Because you see all those biotechs and pharmacies and ventures that are in this field. If they don't have a way to sell a drug as aging, we're going to be stuck for longer. So it's important, it's important for everyone. And then maybe we should make a pool of all those people and get, get enough money to do this study. But the study is ready to launch. And I hope that by later this year, we'll have more money. Well, well you know, the process of drug development is not easy. And it's sometimes one step forward and two steps backwards. And so uh, developing, so the, the companies that are out there are probably anywhere between five to 10 years, de depending on many, many things, until they're ready for a phase three. Uh, that means a, phar you know, a pharmacy will buy them and do the study. By the way, we'll do the TAME study with their drug because we have a template of how to do this study, a template that the FDA agreed. So we know exactly how to do this study. No matter what drug you bring, this is the study you'll do. It's going to be much cheaper than treating diabetes or hypertension. It's just going to be a, a, an easier study to do. So, uh, so what I'm saying, if it, in five years we're ready for phase three, that's when TAME will be in conclusion and we can go straight to test uh, drugs for their uh, aging uh, effects. The, the challenge on how we develop drugs now that have an aging component, and it was uh, exemplified very nicely in this meeting, you need, first of all, to find an easy way, an easy indication to have. So you can start, a, start the drug and get some data on a certain disease or a peculiar disease or a rare disease or an orphan disease in order to make some money in order to prepare for the aging part. And that's what we're all doing. And unfortunately, there are some mechanisms that are probably great uh, as far as aging, but they don't, or drugs that are good like that, but you cannot find an indication for that drug, which kind of makes, can, we have to pass it for now, before we are ready. Yeah, look, I, I, I want to say this one. Metformin is not going to be the best drug for aging. It's a tool, okay? It's a, it's, in my mind, it will be a relatively weak drug, okay? Just two years of health span. Uh, but, what we know about metformin is that it's extremely safe because we've used it for 60 years extensively, billions and billions of years of use. And one thing we don't want to do is kill anyone on the way to our goals, okay? This will set us behind. So I would argue that rapamycin, at least in animal, is a more potent drug than metformin. But rapamycin is not a safe drug for use now. It causes diabetes in people who are getting that. And it causes other side effects and things in animals that we still don't know if they're going to, do in human, to be in humans, but I think they would be, like cataracts, like testicular atrophy, uh, you know, other, other things. And so, although it's potentially more important, it's just not ready. You have to develop a better drug, a safer drug to, to have it. Well, with the... the uh, rapamycin, the challenge that is being pretty much met now, because there's a good development, is the rapamycin uh, targets a metabolic pathway and an aging pathway. And, and when uh, the, the blockers, the, the, the way it's blocked now, it's blocking both of them. So you need to find something that is more specific for the aging longevity than for the metabolic. And there's a real advance here. There are several companies that have 
a, a drug that is much more specific for the aging. So I think it will develop, but even then, a, you can do a five-year study and you can find that there's a lot of problems, uh, you know, other side effects and stuff. So uh, you will, before you do the studies, you don't know what's happening. And there'll be, uh, there'll be an exchange, you know, something, something will be bad too. Not that it's not worth it, but you need to know it and you need to identify it and you need to treat it. No, you know, there's no really shortcuts. You know, there are things that you have to do. You know, the toxicology on three animals itself can take a year, okay? And you, and you don't, you cannot shorten that. Um, you know, manufacturing the drug in a, in, a, in a way that it's pure and ready to use. Um, designing a phase one trial where you show its safety and then a phase two where you have maybe a proof of concept. Those will take the time that it takes. I think the one approach that we should think of is when we have drugs like that, that basically, if they increase longevity, they should be safer <laughs> than other thing, is instead of phase three trial, to actually sell the drugs and follow the users and have five years to accumulate evidence and, and then get the permission to do that. Uh, Japan is thinking of doing some of that for some drugs. Of course, in Japan, you might trust the physician better than in other parts to give a good report. It, it is not so simple to do, but I think we'll have to do it in order to accelerate treatments.